DC Comics are in terrible shape. It really all comes down to really bad creative. The foundation is laid. They have the best superhero characters in the world, in my opinion. Some people would say they had the second best to Marvel, but really as far as awareness and people knowing who the characters are and notoriety, they're right up there with Marvel Comics, yet they cannot sell at the level of Marvel Comics right now, and they are having a crisis of creative. The foundation are the characters in the universes that are well-established, but the lifeblood of DC Comics are the creatives involved. And right now we've got Megan Fitzmartin, Vida Ayala, T.D. Howard, Stephanie Phillips, Tim Sheridan, Clunrad on far too many notable titles right now, and you end up with an epidemic of just bad creative destroying characters left and right. Let's not forget to mention Tom King and a lot of the character assassination he's done. Lately, we've seen a lot of high-profile, big-name creators associated with DC Comics not really working with them anymore. Scott Snyder comes to mind. James Tynan comes to mind. Peter J. Tomasi comes to mind. Sure, they might come in for a short story here and there. Why would they want to leave DC Comics? It's because the leadership is bad. Under Paul Levitz, DC Comics were notorious for taking care of the creators. If you had an idea that was transferred into a movie or streaming or something, you were going to get compensated. If DC Comics, in partnership with another company, were going to do something with something you created, you were going to be notified about it, and they were likely going to congratulate you somewhere and let people know why you were a special creator and make you feel welcome and want to come back to DC Comics. That changed under the leadership of Dan Didio and Jim Lee. Now, Dan Didio did have some good qualities as a leader. He was terrible with creative direction, but at least he went out there and he was basically like a shield, blocking criticism of his creators and basically taking all that criticism on himself, saying it's my fault. People like working for leaders like that, that are willing to go eat a bullet, even if it wasn't their fault, just to make sure that their people are taken care of. We are not seeing that out of Jim Lee, and we're not seeing any creators really come back to DC Comics. In fact, we're just seeing more good creators leave over time. And I believe it all stems with Jim Lee and the terrible way that they treat their creatives. Recently, I got an email from someone in the community. Their name is Dazzler B, if you know who that is. They attended Thought Bubble this year and had several conversations from low-level DC talent all the way up to like the A-list DC talent that aren't working for them right now. And all the stories that these creators were telling Dazzler B had something eerily similar about them bad leadership on the part of DC Comics and never notifying them when their stories were being adapted, when their artwork was actually even used. In one case, one of the writers had to change their story based on like a variant cover or a special cover that tied into an event that they weren't even writing about at the time. Absolutely disgusting stuff. And you can see why so many creators have gone out the exit door under Jim Lee's leadership and they aren't coming back. Let's talk about Cecil Castellucci first. Not exactly a big name talent, but this is what Cecil Castellucci told Dazzler B. She was very happy with the outcome of Batgirl number 47 because she was given the comic cover first and then had to change the ending of her run to match it. That's quite disrespectful to go in there with a story that you're trying to tell, like you're going in a direction, and then they hand you a cover saying, hey, we're going to homage the killing joke, so you're going to have to change your entire story from that. Why would anyone want to come back and work with DC Comics, even if you were a D or an F level talent like Cecil Castellucci. And then you see the current landscape of DC Comics and it's no wonder the only people that want to work for them are no talent hacks like a Clunrad, a Megan Fitzmartin, a Stephanie Phillips. All the leftovers are willing to work for DC Comics because they can't get a lot of work elsewhere. But anybody with like self-respect is going to be like, screw this. You want me to change my story because you got a cover that was homaging a story from 30 years ago? No thanks. It gets worse because the names I'm going to talk about are going to get more and more high profile. Next up, we got Raphael Albuquerque, the current artist on Detective Comics under Ram B. Dazzler B asked Raphael to sign James Tynan's Detective Comics run. Raphael Albuquerque looked confused and Dazzler B told him, all the variant covers are yours. Raphael Albuquerque actually responded, are they? And then explained, DC don't inform him where they choose to collect or use his art once he's turned in the covers. I totally understand that there's probably a drawer in Jim Lee's office or maybe one of the executive editors like a Ben Abernathy full of unused covers that they can pull out when they need to use the cover. But you would expect them to actually get with the artist and say, hey, you remember that cover you turned in like three or four years ago? We're finally going to use it. It's going to be published just in case anyone actually asks you about it. Remember that work that you did that you were really proud of that we never used? We're finally going to use it. And Raphael Albuquerque isn't just some jabroti. I mean, he's not Greg Capullo or anything like this. 
but he is a solid comic book artist that you can be happy and proud to have in your stable. Obviously, he is working on Detective Comics right now, but I imagine that's very frustrating, and it doesn't speak well of the leadership of DC Comics under Jim Lee, and especially Dan Didio, who would have been the co-publisher at the time when James Tynan's Detective Comics run was going. They also spoke to Jock, certainly well-known to DC Comics fans for his work on Batman. Dazzler B asked Jock, was it cool to know they used your book as the basis for the Arrow TV show? Jock responded, they never told me. I first found out at a San Diego Comic-Con panel. Someone asked me about it, and I didn't know what they were talking about. You would imagine the least they could do, just being leaders and understating the position Jock was going to be in, that they would at least give him an email, maybe a text message, or even just maybe a personal phone call to say congratulations. All the hard work that you put in on Green Arrow Year One, it's paying off. That's being adapted. And all the wonderful imagery that you created is going to be used to inform that series. That would probably feel like a pretty big deal to somebody like Jock that grew up as a lifelong comic book fan, DC Comics fan. This is something they probably would have liked to, I don't know, brag about to their family, brag about to their friends. Maybe know when they go on to a San Diego Comic-Con panel that it's actually happening at the time. These stories continue and continue and continue. Next up, James Tynan explained he found out about his Batman Ninja Turtles story being adapted into an animated film when he bumped into the scriptwriter at his friend's birthday party. He wasn't even told Punchline was getting her own solo series, although James is happy the character is getting that, and he also hopes that the Gardener gets a solo series in the future as well. Can you imagine being the writer of the Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover comic book, which is absolutely fabulous. If you love those characters, read volume one. Read volume three, skip volume two, and you'll be very happy. And you'll thank me later for it. A nerd like James Tynan going to a party and the person that's adapting his work actually tells him, you know that comic book story that you wrote that was awesome with those characters you loved your entire life? I'm actually adapting that. Did you actually know about it? And having to say, you know what? This is the first time I've heard about it. I wonder why DC Comics cannot get James Tynan to come back for a regular superhero comic book. I wonder... Why James Tynan said, you know what? I'm writing the most popular American superhero in the world, the best-selling comic book series in the entire North American market. I think I'm going to take my ball and go home. Do you think perhaps, just maybe, being blindsided with information like that at a birthday party of all places, maybe was the reason that James Tynan said, DC Comics, maybe you're not worth it anymore. Another big name creator associated with James Tynan, I believe you could call him his mentor, Scott Snyder, had an interesting story. They spoke about Court of Owls being used in Gotham Knights. Scott Snyder wasn't notified Warner Brothers Montreal intended to use his creations in their video game. Scott said he's happy for people to take his creations and move them forward. Dazzler B asked Scott on that note, if someone took the signal and treated him like Tom King treated Wally West, would you be okay with that? This is what Scott Snyder had to say. You have to earn that right in a story, and the story of Heroes in Crisis did not earn that. Scott Snyder said that he does like Tom King, but didn't agree with him marrying off Batman either. He said that wasn't earned. Scott freaking Snyder, the guy who created The Court of Owls, the guy who wrote The Black Mirror, the guy who wrote Death Metal, that was easily the headline comic book writer at DC Comics at the time, wasn't even notified that they were going to take one of his outstanding creations one of the things he's absolutely known for, and there was no way in this world that people weren't going to ask him about it. They never even mentioned, you know what? They're going to use Court of Owls in this video game. Perhaps that would be information that Scott Snyder would like to have. Now, he was very gracious about it, but actions speak louder than words. Who is Scott Snyder not writing for anymore? DC Comics. I wonder why. And then we also know there was a power struggle behind the scenes between Tom King, Scott Snyder, and I believe Brian Michael Bettis. And I imagine terrible stories like Heroes in Crisis and the stupid Batman wedding that never happened probably irked off Scott Snyder a lot. Because who do you think got asked a lot of questions about that? You're right, Scott Snyder. He was supposed to be the guy that was going to be in charge of DC Comics Creative after Dan Didio left. It sounds like it happened for a very short time following Dark Knight's Death Metal, and then he moved on, and you can't blame him with terrible leadership that don't even notify you when the one enormous creation in the DC Comics universe that everyone associates only with you, they can't even tell you when it's being adapted into a big video game. And that's how we get to where we are today. No good creators really want to work with DC Comics all that much. They're all kind of moving on. 
their merry way after their terrible treatment by DC Comics leadership, starting under Dan Didio and certainly continuing under Jim Lee. At this point, their sales are abysmal. They cannot keep up with Marvel Comics. They can't sell any character outside of Batman. And Jim Lee doesn't seem to care or even know about it. I talked about all this several months ago, the terrible state of DC Comics sales under Jim Lee. What a laughing stock his leadership really is. If you can't see the video here, there's also a link in the video description.